Hi, this is Zach May with the weekend edition of the Bulletin Board Heroes here at Zach'sTradersCafe.com. Signing up with the FTSE, which uh, has delivered a, an RSI rebound around the uh, neutral RSI 50 level, which is normally a leading indicator on the upside. We've also bounced three days in a row off a rising 50-day line, so we should be heading up to the top of that rising trend channel from August 78.30, well before the end of this month, especially given the way that the other markets, uh, like the uh, DAX and the Dow, are way outperforming this market. This is like a dying donkey compared to those two. And moving on to the DAX, and uh, we can see that uh, our uh, wildest expectations have been met in terms of the line uh, being hit there, the red line there from September around 17,700. Looking for that to be broken and a move up to as high as 18,500 by the end of next month, giving the market a bit of time. It might not actually need that amount of time, but uh, we have to factor in potential retracements. The initial retracement area would be 17,500, which was the... Uh, late February resistance and then the floor of the channel there 17,200 at the moment our worst case scenario in terms of any downside pullback moving along to the Dow and uh, here you can see the market uh, has seen the floor of that rising trend channel three-day test of that around uh, 38,600 which is quite healthy or feels quite healthy we've got the rising trend channel there from October heading up to as high as 41,200 which seems amazing and uh, obviously unachievable but uh, we are within that channel, and while we are within that channel, there is a chance of that being hit by the end of the, uh, next month. Uh, if you're cautious, so obviously you wait for a momentum signal, 39,300 plus, and uh, factoring in the downside, that would be down to the 50-day line, and uh, basically February support for this market, 38,000 or so. Moving on to Bitcoin, which was the star of the past week, and we hope that it'll be the star of many weeks to come ahead of the uh, halving that we're all looking forward to at the end of April here we've got the old target there 60,000 which we were looking for by the end of March obviously we got that by the end of February helped along by the leap day as well uh, initial resistance here at 65,000 which is a uh, resistance line projection there for September best case by the end of this month up to 70,000 or even 70,400 at that May resistance line projection quite a lot of uh, uh, resistance lines uh, going through that chart uh, but as I said, 60,000, uh, the worst we're expecting. If we do break down, then maybe the uh, 53, 54,000 area might be a contender, given that that was uh, temporarily resistance on the way up. Moving along to gold, which what used to be as exciting as uh, uh, Bitcoin, and may once again be like that. Uh, we were looking for a break of 2055 to take us up to 2100. Over the next week or two, that happened uh, basically in one day, which is quite nice. And then we were hoping for 2180 by the end of March, which obviously now looks uh, rather more in the frame than it did even just a couple of days ago. The sign that uh, we were going to head higher came from the RSI rebound on neutral 50 and the way that uh, in recent days, the 50-day line has been rising and we'd had that sort of sideways shuffle either side of that 50-day line. So looking quite healthy there. And not expecting now any price action back below 2050, 2060. Okay. Moving on to the stocks and uh, starting off with uh, Andrada Mining, which uh, after a nuclear winter since uh, June, basically, within that falling trend channel, looks like it's having another go at breaking out of that channel. Expecting now with the RSI through the 50 level, hasn't been properly through 50 since way back in September, that uh, we are now seeing some positive, genuine positive momentum here. Um, even uh, though everyone in town seems to be trying to call the shares up uh, over the last month, this looks like this will be it, this week will be it. And uh, through 4.6 pence, we're looking for 5.5 pence by the end of March. Moving along to uh, a stock which uh, is normally something of a punter's favourite, uh, Arkentech. Here you can see that uh, we are, we've got a sort of V-shaped bull flag. We uh, gapped up at the beginning of the week, so it was a bear trap gap reversal, one of our best uh, and more reliable signals and uh, the view now is that the longer we stay above the uh, one pound level the greater the chance of moving to as high as one pound fifty and that late 2021 resistance line projection perhaps as soon as the end of next month the end of april obviously it's a punchy call but uh, let's see if Arkentech and our new kind of bull market that we have for small caps will deliver the goods next up is adbfn and uh, here we've had effectively a triple bottom for the shares uh, at and just below the 12 pence level we've got a rising 50-day line off the lows after a sideways uh, move 
that we had during the week. That suggests that we're ready to break out above 14 pence, looking for as high as 21 pence or 22 pence by the end of March. Again, a punchy call. Moving on to Ananda, and uh, here the uh, excitement is provided by the way that we've got this sharply rising 50-day moving average, and we've closed on that uh, for the week. Above the floor, that rising trend channel base from September at 0.33, we're looking for up to 0.47 by the end of this month. Great performance here in the recent past from uh, uh, Clean Power Hydrogen, and uh, here you can see that uh, we've broken, well, we've achieved our first target there around 12 pence, the top of that broadening triangle from January. Now we're looking for up to 18 or 19 pence by the end of this month, maybe rather sooner than that, the way things are going uh, after that V-shaped bull flag breakout. And uh, if you look closely, you can see that the 50-day uh, line is also rising. So uh, the last week, basically either uh, neutral candles or bullish ones, and that looks impressive. Upside value while we are above 12 pence. Moving along to uh, Clontarf, and uh, here you can see that... Uh, We've got this uh, sort of slow break of that trend line there from June. That was around the uh, 0 0.04 pence level. We also closed uh, above the 50-day line at that level, above 0 0.04, looking for up to 0 0.07 by the end of this month. Uh, although, as we said, this is a slightly uh, slow situation, rather messy price action generally. Next up is feedback, which is also coming off uh, something of a nuclear winter, which is a one-year nuclear winter in this case in terms of the price action. But we looked, it looks as though we've got a broadening triangle base. That's been in place since the end of August. And uh, the real breakout, basically, in the last uh, couple of sessions with a breakthrough 72 pence. Above that, we're looking for £1.10 as soon as the end of this month, backed by the way that uh, we've got a series of very strong candles there. So... Uh, Basically, uh, off the lows, only one slightly uh, dodgy candle there. Uh, if you're cautious, you maybe wait for an end of day close clear of the 200 day line at 84 pence, but uh, looks like uh, feedback is back, so to speak. On to uh, GCM, which had a great uh, move during the week and uh, very uh, cons consoling that the shares managed to hold most of their gains. You don't normally see that. Uh, above three pence, still looking for four and three quarters over the next week or two there after that massive gap close buy signal for the shares. Next up is uh, Hybrid Utopia, which uh, has remained uh, steady over the course of this week. Our previous target was 9 pence. We managed to hold that as new support. And above that, looking for a retest at least of the uh, 14 pence area that we saw last week. The other point to note is that uh, we have just been treated to a golden cross buy signal between the 50 and 200 day lines. If you're a fan of the shares and looking for greater glories, maybe the target for the end of next month would be up to 21 or 22 pence at that January 2023 resistance line projection. Lots of news flow as usual from Marula and uh, it looks as though it could be uh, fourth or fifth time lucky with the shares breaking through the 14 pence level. We had extended support for the shares at 10 pence which was good news because that was the old resistance, old support becoming new resistance and if you look closely you can see that the uh, 50 and 200 day lines are now rising that suggests that we're in a run up to a uh, a golden cross the run up to a golden cross tends to be the strongest part of the cycle we're looking for 20 pence now by the end of this month if we're lucky and uh, if you're patient maybe you could allow it for the end of next month but uh, uh, as i said it looks as though the breakthrough 14 pence is now imminent for marula and uh, we're assuming the 10 pence will now be the support, long-lasting support for the shares. Moving on to Panthera, which uh, had a little spike towards the end of the week. Here it's exciting in a sense that uh, for much of uh, the last month, in fact, we've seen the 50-day uh, moving average rising. That's rising off the lows. And uh, we've had the shares now closing well above that. Tends to be a leading indicator on the upside. Initial target here at 7 and a quarter, and then looking for 11 pence perhaps as soon as the end of this month, if this is the big break, given the way that the 50-day line is rising so well. Moving on to Premier African, where uh, the uh, rather rash prediction that uh, the uh, day's early price action would actually be the lows uh, turned out to be correct. We actually had a bounce off the rising 50-day line, which we also had last week, and that uh, gave us a rally towards uh, 0.4 pence. So we're looking for another move towards the 200-day uh, line, in this case, at 0.42 pence and the uh, long awaited or a long awaited end of day close through 0.42 in the 50 day line and the 200 day line rather could take us up 
to 0.6 pence by the end of next month. That's obviously a punchy call and only valid while we hold above that 50-day line at 0.24. Interesting week for Powerhouse Energy, which has uh, rehabilitated itself over the course, or did rehabilitate itself over the course of uh, February. The uh, big giveaway that there was going to be a change was the unfilled gap to the upside through the 50-day moving average, which was obviously commented uh, commented on many times over here. We had a V-shaped bull flag breakout through 0.55. And now we're seeing the shares bouncing above the old August gap, 0.67. The longer they stay above the old August peak at 0.82, the greater the chance of move to 1.3, 1.4 pence sometime during the course of March. Moving along to a less high-profile situation, space and people. This is exciting because it's actually got the same, basically got the same chart or the same setup that Powerhouse Energy had. Uh, in February, so an unfilled gap to the upside through the 50-day line. We've now got a V-shaped bull flag um, developing, and we're looking for a break of 93 pence, the February peak, to take us up to a target perhaps as high as £1.35, which is a resistance line projection from uh, back in the uh, summer of 2022. So lots of expectation there, and uh, it's also interesting that we gap down there back in uh, the, in September last year, we gapped up this year, so it's a bear trap iron reversal. That tends to be one of the strongest setups around. So a break of 90p or the low 90s there could deliver some fireworks. Interesting uh, situation at Saito at the moment, where obviously uh, on a fundamental basis, things are not looking uh, that great. But uh, there was a decent bit of a bounce for the shares, presumably a dead cat bounce uh, on Friday. The resistance area to note, though, is uh, 0.72.5, which I think I said on Friday as well. That would be the level to break to really give us a, a proper move, maybe to a penny or a penny and a half, even if uh, the worst happens at that company or ahead of that happening. Moving on to skin uh, biotherapeutics. And uh, here, interesting that we've got a bit of bullish divergence here. We've uh, managed to um, bat. We've got an RSI up the support line there. Shares went low, but the RSI remaining relatively firm. Want to see basically an end of day close back above that threat, that uh, February low there around uh, 10 and a quarter pence. Above that, we're looking for the shares to at least head back to the old December support around 14 and a half pence sometime during the course of March, even if the shares then tip back down after that. Finishing off with uh, the last two, the first one is Thor Explorations, where it looks like finally after its uh, post summer decline and uh, lots of people getting rather disappointed in the performance. Uh, we've finally got a broadening triangle reversal here and uh, looking for 17 pence sometime during March, especially while we hold above the uh, initial February support there at 12.1 pence. So about, basically about 12 pence looking for 17 pence at Thor during the course of March. Finishing off with a company that I've interviewed quite a few times since it came to market. I also charted it, even though it's TSXV Canadian company, Pulsar Helium. Here we had uh, basically from the autumn the uh, view that the shares were in a rising trend channel heading towards as high as 0.65 cents. In fact, uh, what's happened is we've blown the doors off on that particular uh, target, which is obviously very satisfying. The only thing now left to do is try and work out where, after uh, getting to a dollar, how much uh, more upside there is there. Looks as though we could head up to that November resistance line projection at 1.4 pence hopefully sometime during the course of March, and especially while we're above the 80 cents area. That's it for me today. More updates during the week.